Welcome back to Watching Film in Varnador Films. I am Seth Varnador. I'm a former high school and college football coach. Now I break down film here on YouTube with a particular emphasis on the Florida Gators and their opponents. It's time for the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. It's finally that time of the year again. One of the best rivalries in football, one of the best venues in football. Hopefully that doesn't change in the near future, but it might. The Georgia Bulldogs are Florida's opponents this weekend. And, um, you know, I went back, watched some cl old clinic tape. I, I checked through old coaching manuals, and I'm ready to give my expert opinion. Uh, Georgia's pretty good. Uh, they got a ton of talent and much to uh, the dismay of uh, rival fan bases. And what they say about Kirby Smart, they're pretty well coached too. So that combination wins you championships. They obviously won won last year. Are they good enough to repeat? They're pretty good. So let's go ahead and get to the Georgia Bulldogs here. What they do well, maybe where opponents like Florida may have some opportunities um, on both sides of the ball. So we'll start with the Georgia defense here they're uh they're still really good here we got game against kent state who gave them a little bit of problems but it, it wasn't it wasn't really uh, i didn't feel quite as close but here you can see georgia fitting up the run pretty well they're fitting up uh, a gap scheme here just like, like watching how he takes on this first puller right we've seen florida the last few years uh, struggle taking on this counter. Watch how he takes on the first puller, causes a pile. You got a end attack in the back, and you got the backer ready to scrape over the top for the quarterback. Well defended there, and you know they do a pretty good job. They're well coached. They got a lot of good players. Here again, you kind of beat again, fitting up a gap run. with a little blitz as well, and then fitting up the quarterback afterwards on the third and short there. So they can defend the run. They can get after you, rushing the passer. They've got some athletic guys. They move a ton. You know, they're not, it's not just a static rush. Guys are moving. They're blitzing. Guys are winning one-on-one -on -one battles. Right here you see guys moving all around. Right? It's not just a static rush. You're going to have here, here, and then he's wrapping all the way around. That's pretty good stuff. So it, it, this is not just like we line up, we rush. It's not quite that easy. I think they also like to do this where they'll they, – they definitely like to overload sides of the protection. So here I think they do some of this where they're pass rushing you, trying to flush you to a side. So here you have kind of a almost like a creeper look, but it could be like a, a simulated pressure where I'm coming. Once I see a match, I can drop out of it. But they're bringing like four from the guard over. Try to flush him. And you can flush him to this guy almost. I think that's something they do. That's something you'll see teams do on third downs. Try to push a guy to one side or the other. So right here, it looks to me like they're trying to push Nick's left. He's able to kind of sit in the pocket and throw. But I think they're trying to kind of push you to your left side, make you get – if you get out of the pocket, Oregon does a decent job picking it up, but make you get out of the pocket to a side you're not super comfortable with. So I think they're trying to do the same here, flush the, flush the quarterback out, and they have a spy probably waiting to attack as soon as he's flushed. Right? We saw LSU do something similar. Uh, in previous weeks, I mean they're 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 going to be aggressive. I think the third downs are pretty aggressive. I try to get some numbers. Uh, I didn't get the exact numbers, but they'll blitz you. I think they'll blitz you on any down and distance though, um, and they'll run some here. You got a little creeper action, right? So Florida's runs the creepers, or you're bringing four, but it's not quite the four you think it is. So you got three got you got five on the line of scrimmage. You get two guys drop out, backer comes, you're still only rushing four. It's a safe pressure. 
and just about able to get there, force their quarterback to pull it down, tackle him on third and long for to get off the field, right? They'll play some man coverage, but they haven't won every rep of man coverage this year. You're not going to win every rep. Um, here's a good shot. Jet play action, able to get over the top and win against man coverage here. They're going to have – this Florida's going to have to hit some explosive off the play action game because um, I would imagine Georgia safeties are going to get involved in the run game and kind of force Florida to win outside. And if you can do – if you can win the one-on-one matchups outside, you can get some explosive plays like Missouri does here. And they were susceptible a little bit against Auburn to some scrambling. I I would wonder – you know, I I, th- I would think teams play Florida and Auburn somewhat similarly. Auburn uses a decent amount of 12 personnel just like Florida does. So I, I think the game preps would be similar. Richardson is a, a better player than Ashford, but Ashford's a very good runner. So I'm, you know, could Richardson have these type of opportunities or are they going to really spy him all game? Uh, we'll kind of see. But Ashford was able to kind of get out of the pocket a little bit and do some things here. Looks like he's got a big gain and he fumbles. Been one of those kind of years for Auburn. So Kent State threw a ton of screen on, especially on first down, I thought, early down. So I thought maybe is Georgia been a heavy blitz team? Is that why they did it? But this is kind of what they do. And this is why I think, um, I don't think, I don't know if Florida's going to be able to exploit these type of things, but these are things that Tennessee's watching and looking for next week ton of screen um kent state had some success with it that's kind of their most successful stuff is throwing these screens right because if you got a good hard pass rush and and you're liable to blitz at any moment i might be able to get you with one of these every now and then but you got to be able to block on the perimeter kent state did a really good job at it florida has not been great they've been been getting better here's auburn running a little mesh one of florida's uh, favorite passing concepts this year. So you can kind of see Mesh is difficult to deal with, but there's Auburn running it for a decent gain. Here's one I thought Kent State had a really good play drawn up. Uh, another screen where you really take advantage of this pass rush. Third and short. Screen to the tight end right here that looks pretty good. They've got – this is really well designed by Kent State. You got the center coming around to be like the rat killer. He's going to turn back for any of this backside pursuit. You've got two on one here. All right, there's one on one. He's got that. He's coming back for him. This looks like a great play. He catches it and then kind of trips over himself. You got a really good play set up. Uh, so those are the kind of – you got to be able to take advantage of their aggressiveness here, like aggressively filling for run, little RPO look from Kent State. This has not been Florida. The issue is these have not been Florida's real forte this year. It is screen. Not been a great or big screen team this year. Um, Not been a huge RP. There's been some RPO, but not a huge one. I think teams are trying to take advantage. You know, the Georgia's corners, I think teams have a lot of respect for. People have tried to take some shots down the field on the safeties, uh, but they've made some plays here. Oregon trying to push the ball down the field vertically. Great catch. I mean, that's an unbelievable catch right there. But you got the corner playing hard in the flat or kind of on number one. So you get the slot on the safety. Safety is able to make a play. Um, Missouri had some success with the wide zone. Uh, Not a ton of it, but they, they they popped some big runs here. You see a big one that couldn't quite get it to the end zone. They ended up only getting a field goal out of that. Uh, Kind of a big... Big difference in the game. And here's another one later in the game. They pop for a pretty big gain. So Florida's a pretty good wide zone team. We'll see if that's something they're able to get popped as well. I would imagine Georgia's going to be preparing for that. One thing I noticed, Auburn seemed to be kind of picking on number three a lot. So Auburn seemed to have some throws designed for this third receiver. So one, two, three matched up on i believe a safety they had some throws for number three there here's another one after motion pretty good throw right here on third and 13 able to pick it up and then they threw to the back i think 
to me, watching back through a few teams, especially watching Oregon, it seemed like one of their big uh, points of emphasis was getting the back out in the pass routes and throwing the ball to them against Georgia. I haven't watched a ton of Oregon, so maybe that's what they do every week. But going back and watching, they're throwing to the back right there. They don't quite get it. Right, looks like they might get a pick, but right here, another throw to the back. Another throw to the back. So a lot of their more successful plays in this game seem to be, and right here, here's one <laughs> that should have been thrown to the back, who's out here in the slot. Uh, you know, these Georgia defenders, a lot of, a few of these guys have been around for a while, and you can't be double clutching like this, right? Here. Kind of double clutch. Now I'll try to throw it. This one probably should have been thrown to the back. It wasn't. Thank you very much. Can't do that. There's no way Florida wins this. I would be. Uh, it would be extremely shocking for Florida to win this game, uh, turning the ball over at all. So I think Florida's got to play really clean on offense and hope that they get a couple go the other way defensively. So let's get to that side of the ball. Let's look at the Georgia offense. Uh, they've been, you know, watching them, they're, they're well-designed. They're, they're good on that side of the ball. I I think they're kind of underrated a little bit offensively. They do make a lot of easy throws for the quarterback, but it's just a well-designed offense. Like we all want easy throws for the quarterback, right? Little zone run. This looks like maybe like wine, possibly like wine back where he's going to, kind of follow it back behind that tight end in motion there. They'll run a good bit of split zone, right? Two tight ends. Bowers and Washington are both guys that can block like crazy. So a good bit of split zone. Here's one thing I did notice in the Kent State game. Um, I don't know if this was just a game plan specific thing or um, this is something they do a lot. But, you know, it's a tendency, but they also could have a tendency breaker off of it. Every time they motion the tight end across and back this way, so they bring him over and back, every single time he would come back to that side post-snap. So motions across, comes motions back, and then after the snap, he's going back this way. All right, so here's split zone. He motions back. He's coming back across the formation. Same thing, motions back. He's coming back across the formation. Another split zone, they give it. This is also could be like, a, you know, off the split zone, they can do a lot of different things. They can bluff it, right? And the quarterback can keep it. He can get out in the flat and you can almost boot. You can boot off of it, but it's all that split zone action. And with those two tight ends, that makes it really difficult. All right, here's another look. And they've also got some bad dudes playing running back. They, they're, they're, this is a really talented team. It's hard to tell how talented they are at kind of outside receiver. They've got some guys that can play, uh, but I don't think that's the strength of their team. Tight ends are studs. Running backs are studs. I think they're pretty good up front too. Um, here's them starting to get into some gap run. A lot of kind of counter looks where you're down and you're pulling two from the backside. Kicking and wrapping. Kick, wrap. I don't know who this dude is, but he's a load. He's, 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 he's a good player too, man. They got a bunch of them. There it is, right? It kind of cuts here, but he starts here, motions back, and now they're coming back this way, right? So we'll see if that's something uh, that carries over, if that's a tendency that carries over. Or, you know, sometimes you make tendencies to break tendencies. So maybe you show that, you show that, and then when you get in the big game against Florida here, or maybe they'll save it for next week, who knows, you break that tendency. So you bring him across, you make it look the same, and then maybe a play-action shot or something off of it, right? Just get get the team thinking he's coming back because so far every time I've seen it, he's come back the other way. Gap run. Big part of their play, but this is something that's a really big part is jet, jet sweep. They're almost at times like there's some of this stuff they get in with the double tight is almost like double wing stuff where they're running like speeds, they're running speed sweep, 
they're running to tight ends. They're running, you know, uh, there it is again. Or let's go back to this one because this is just ridiculous. This is your tight end here. Safety's got had an angle. Uh, you outrun the safety's angle. That's pretty ridiculous. Here's another one. Hand it to your tight end. So there's a lot of uh, kind of inventive stuff or, or um, innovative stuff here. Handing the ball to tight end. But again, Jet here. They'll put the running back over here in a wing and hand it to him. They'll kind of put move guys all over the place. And it is at times like a double wing in the run game where you got the jet going one way and then you got run away from it. Right. So it, you get that kind of misdirection. You'd get in some double wing stuff right here, jet flip it. So th there's counters off of these things too, right? You run a ton of jet. I'm sure they have play action shots off of it. They've got the flip out there off of it with these condensed formations. They like to run this is catches it late, but, Bowers here, Lad there. Run reverse off of it, especially they like to run a little toss action to that bunch side. And then this is something didn't quite catch it, but you see how everyone's kind of we're getting lined up here. They'll get, do a sugar huddle, so they'll they'll do a huddle about three yards behind the ball, and then everyone goes and lines up quick. They did this to Florida last year, I believe, and went tackle over with it. So they went sugar huddle. So quick huddle, close to the line of scrimmage. Everyone turn around and get on the ball fast, and they went tackle over with it. And they maybe do something similar this year, but that is something they like to do in short yards is that sugar huddle. So off the run game stuff, that's kind of the run game. They'll, they'll do some RPO stuff. So this is one of their favorite quick game concepts. Uh, they like to run stick, but they'll run it with a slot fade instead of the traditional stick, which is a go and a flat in the stick route here. They'll just switch the responsibilities of one and two. He'll stay on the stick route. He'll become the deep player. He'll become the flat player, right? But it's just stick. So here it is handing off. It's an RPO. Could just be a package play. Here it is. He fills, throw it to him. Boot, there it is, right? Looks off, looks just like split zone right here. Boot. They love to get the tight ends vertical off play action too. Here's boot again. Stetson will keep it, right? He's a pretty good athlete, plus athlete, but he can also just drop it down to these beasts. And you got to tackle them. Good luck. Boot again. The, the the offense is very well designed, and this doesn't ask the quarterback to do a ton. It's like to me, it's kind of like it, Stetson Bennett is a little bit like a he's a pass first point guard to me. He, he just kind of he, he controls the tempo. He gets the ball to do the to the people that need it um, with good timing, good anticipation. Screen is a huge part of their offense here. So uh, that's that's kind of how I feel about Stetson. He's not, you know, he's not um, he's not a crazy playmaker by himself. He's 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 he gets hot, I think, and, and can get really hot and make some throws. But they do a good job of making it pretty easy on him and on their their quarterbacks. That's not to say the guy can't play; he can play, but. Um, they do a good job, and screen is a big part of that. You see here all the different ways they're running screens. Throw it to the tight end, throw it to the back. Now screens, screens to the back where the linemen are getting out. All kinds of different stuff. A bunch of different ways to run screen. In different situations, they'll run it third and long. They'll run it first down right here, second and seven. They'll run it kind of all over the place. This is just another, you know, flare screen basically. But just easy throws for the quarterback, easy reads. Get the ball in your in your dude's hands quick. Doesn't need to be complicated. If you got dudes, give them the ball. And things like this can happen. Looks like a, here like a spacing concept at a bunch. Where he's kind of out. Inside curl. Curling right there. Delivers an accurate ball there. 
snag concept. I believe you're going to have snag corner after the motion. He's the flare flat guy. There it is. Missouri does a pretty good job defending it here on third down, but that's a quick game concept they like. Here it is again. Same idea here. Snag, corner, flat. It's a concept everybody runs, really. Florida runs this as well. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty, uh, pretty popular one. Here's another look at stick without the run component attached. And they like to go um, stick to, especially out of empty, it seems a few times, stick to the field, speed out and a go to the boundary. And then here's where you get Stetson showing that plus athleticism here. This is against SEC athletes, right? This is an SEC defense. It's, Auburn's not a bad defense, and he, he uh, ran by some dudes. Here it is again, same look. Here time, this time he throws a speed out at the bottom, but you see up top you got the stick. Down here you got the speed out and the go. There's a stick. Right, well designed, nothing crazy. They like to run curl. It seems like they like to run curls a lot. Uh, curls and loops, possibly comebacks outside. Pretty good on the timing on these. Stetson is gets the ball out of his hands. Uh, receivers do a good job coming back to it. They're, they're pretty adept at these. If your corner is going to turn and bail, they'll take these underneath all day. The timing is pretty good on them. They, they, and they show they like to run them quite a bit. They run floods out of a variety of looks. Right here, this is kind of an interesting one to me. It's to, it's. I take it as a flood concept. He looks like he goes inside, then he's coming back out. He's we're off we're off screen a little bit, but he's running to go, and then he would end up being the flat player. So you're getting your three level stretch vertically. Right, Bowers runs him out, and now he's able to break out one on one. Another flood concept here. Again, Florida fans should be uh, well-versed at the flood concept. You got one short, one intermediate, one long, all in the same third of the field, flooding that third of the field with bodies. Here it is again. They really like it off this, uh, off play action, which is an um, interesting way to run it. Go, clear out. But if they're rolled up, you can take that shot. Intermediate. Then after he makes his fake, he carries it out, and he's the short player. So still that three-level read. This is a nice ball right here. A little bit of a push, but hey, if they don't call it, they don't call it. Uh, another one they like, um, they seem to like to high-low on the backside of a lot of these. This is a, to me, I think this is going to be another another kind of flood look where he's vertical. He's going to be the intermediate. He's your short guy. They'll do a lot where they put the back short and then they'll run a dig behind it. And they like to pair that with different concepts. So I think that's probably a backside concept they like a lot. Maybe the one receiver side is kind of that high-low. They'll pair it with um, with smash, and they'll run smash a variety of ways. So right, you could run it with a hitch in a corner. Uh, they'll run it especially out of condensed formation with a corner and a flat. Then backside, right? You have this dig coming back across on the backside. That's something they seem to like a lot. You can see it again. Here's smash. And there's the dig back there. So compressed set, corner, flat dig i think he might have an option maybe i'm not quite sure because i've seen him hook up seen him break out could just be it looks like he might be pivoting right there kind of falling behind there similar look there's the corner out 
I think they like to run a little um, white cross as well. This looks kind of like almost like a white cross look where he's the cross. He's the dig back behind it. You almost run it off with a post. You can kind of go or post and they're wheeling this guy here. Uh, might not be white cross, but looks kind of like white cross to me. This, I believe, is white cross. It's kind of delayed because the tight end gets bumped, but right, you've got the go. You got a flat player. You got the Y on the cross. That's kind of the deep crossing route there. Those are kind of all the elements of Y cross. And I think you see him again here. The go, the flat, the deep cross right there. That's one thing they like a lot of play action is um, – Sneaking the tight end up on like wheel routes. Do a good job of getting it back there. Good luck tackling that dude. But here, same thing, play action. Try to get this play action. See if you can sneak the tight end out. Kent State does a pretty good job with it. You got to throw outside. You get the pass interference. But right here, same idea. And then you've always got to be wary of Stetson Bennett. We've seen some of his runs earlier, but he's always liable to take off. Here's just on a, on a naked boot. Nobody's out there. Good fake. And he's got the athleticism run away from people. I thought at times, you know, their pass pro suffered a little bit with the movement. Missouri didn't just statically rush. They brought some pressure. They moved guys around. Here you see Auburn. It's not like a static rush. We're moving a little bit. And then if you get Stetson off his spot, and it's really if you get anybody off their spot, they're gonna they're not gonna play as well, obviously. So you get him off his spot, and it's a little bit more difficult to complete some of these passes, especially those ones that require timing. Uh, you can hit him, you know, force him right here. You hit him and force a fumble. So the 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 pass. You know the the pass blocking hasn't been perfect all year. There's there's some opportunities I think there, especially dealing with movement. I think movement gives them some problems. Uh, not a ton. They're still really good. And then you know I think if you're hoping to beat Georgia, you're hoping that Stetson's off and he just misses a little bit, right? There's it's just a miss. Um, and the other thing you're gonna have to get, you're gonna have to get some turnovers. So here they take a shot. The ball's a little underthrown. Kent State's able to undercut it. Here, another turnover, just an unforced error fumble. And that's kind of been – the games that are tight for them have had these kind of plays. Now, this one they recover. But you see here there's a muffed punt against Kent State right here. They don't recover it. He muffs it, and Kent State recovers, and that's how they're able to get on the board early and get a little momentum. Uh, but, you know, why is he trying to catch everything? Because he's a pretty good punt returner too. So – Georgia's got some good special teams as well. Most well coaches have pretty good special teams, but he has shown the ability to put the ball on the ground a little bit. On the other side, they'll go after your punt block. Right here is a punt block against Kent State. And then uh, not shown, but you had a – we're back at the top here. Had a nice fake field goal against Missouri. Uh, we know Kirby's not afraid to call a fake in a high leverage moment. So always got to be on the lookout for that. Uh, this Georgia team is really good. There's not, you know, they're they're good on both sides of the ball. I don't think their defense is obviously as good as it was last year. Instead of being number one in everything, they're simply top ten, which, you know, what a bunch of losers, right? Only top ten in every metric. So, uh, and, and then the offense is, is really good as well. I think they're number one offensively in success rate. That's down-to-down -down, uh, success, so – going to be a really tough game for Florida, a really tough game for anybody, um, but especially a Florida team that's defense is reeling a little bit and does not have that elite offense to kind of keep Georgia uh, off balance. So going to be a tough game for Florida, going to need turnovers, uh, cause a few turnovers, and uh, not turn the ball over yourself offensively. Going to have to play a really clean game on both sides of the ball. They haven't quite done it yet, but 
hey, maybe they're just waiting to break it out for this big rivalry game.